Okay, we're going to set up color preferences or color settings in Photoshop. Here we're using CS4. CS3 and CS5 work similarly. We're going to go to Edit first, and then we're going to go down to Color Settings. The dialog box comes up. This is the default, which is North American General Purposes. And one of the first things we're going to do very quickly is just simply go to the RGB color mode and change that to Adobe RGB 1998. The reason why we're doing that is because Adobe 1998 RGB is a wider color space than sRGB and many manufacturers of cameras, scanners, etc. have now adopted it after so many years, about 12 years, of using it as a standard because they figure, hey, everybody's using Photoshop. Makes sense. Next, we have the CMYK, the gray scale, and the spot color mode. We can leave these set as a default unless you're in another country other than the United States and choose something different. And just click on the dialog box and go down to your continent of choice. Okay. Now, next we're going to go to color management policies. And these policies are basically telling Photoshop how to handle pictures that are coming into it. If you're using only your pictures, that's not a big deal. But a lot of times, many of us as professionals are going to be using pictures that come from other sources. And we don't know how those colors are set up. The best thing to do is to simply leave it at the default, which is preserve embedded profile. Go ahead and leave the profile the way it is. Don't start screwing that around. Photoshop is going to automatically convert everything to the working RGB anyway, so we might as well just go ahead and keep it as is. When we finish that image and save it again, it'll go back to its embedded profile. As we begin to drop it into our pictures, it's going to be different. So just go ahead and let it stay there. Next, we have three dial uh, check boxes. Excuse me, three check boxes. You can leave them all unchecked. Very basically, this is a reminder that Photoshop would give you that, hey, look, you want me to change something? No, we don't want you to do anything. Just leave it the way it is. But if you feel funny about that or you have interns or something like that working on your computer as well, you may want to check act when opening just to remind people what's going on. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to where it says More Options. We're going to go down to where it says Color Conversion Engine. Leave this with Adobe's default. Next, we're going to go to Relative Color Metrics, or the Rendering Intent, I should say. Excuse me. There are several rendering intents. There's Perceptual, Saturation, relative color metrics and absolute color metrics. I don't want to get into a lot of this right now, but usually you're going to go with either perceptual, if you're using a lot of photographs and things like that, where you're going to have a lot of neutral tones, you may want to go with perceptual. If you're doing a lot of design work, where you're going to be working with a lot of oversaturated colors and things like that, you may want to go with relative color metrics. I personally like relative color metrics. Finally, we have three check boxes here. You can leave all of these checked, but at the same time, if you're working with photographs primarily, you may want to uncheck the middle one or the one that says use dither. What's going to happen when you have that checked is to help create smoother transitions, Photoshop is going to add pixels to help with that transition. That's just going to add more stuff. Sometimes it'll do a good job. Sometimes it's not going to do a good job. You may want to uncheck that. That way you're not adding any more artifacts into the image. That I mean, you're going to be adding so much stuff later anyway. So there's no need in having Photoshop do that on the fly. And we're basically finished right now. Now you'll notice that it says that the color spaces are unsynchronized, okay, with your creative suite. If you're just using... Photoshop, you shouldn't see this, but if you're using the Creative Suite or you have a couple of other programs like Illustrator or InDesign on your computer, this will show up. And you want to have everybody speaking the same language, okay? We'll talk about that in a second.
but for right now now that you've changed everything what you're going to do is you're going to come over here to save you're going to click on save and you're going to give your new policies a name go ahead and give it a name I already have a name for mine so I'm just going to cancel out of this I'm going to go up here to the drop down and I'm going to use Jarvo CS4 that's what I normally use okay and it changes everything to how I usually have it and then I'm going to say okay and that's pretty much that next what we would do is we'd go over to Adobe Bridge and then we would synchronize everything within Bridge because Bridge is just that. It is the hub for all of the Creative Suite software. Okay, next in Bridge, we're going to go to Edit. We're going to go down to Creative Suite Color Settings. And right now, you'll see everything is unsynchronized. So what we would simply do is go down to where our save color settings are and say apply. And that's basically it. We want to check to make sure everything is okay. We simply go back to edit, go back to creative suite color settings, and now we see that we're synchronized. So if we go back into Photoshop, it's going to do the same thing. And now we're done. We have now set up our programs so that they are all handling color the same way. This is just some basic settings for handling color in Photoshop. The next big thing would be calibration, and we'll go into that later. But once again, we want to be sure that all of our devices are calibrated. Our cameras, our scanners, our monitor, our printer are all able to talk to one another using the language of color management.